Yo, yo, yo. Full face cam mode is not something you see quite often, but I'm here today to give you the best honor guide on the platform, okay? We're gonna go over an in-depth honor guide, how to play the character, how to build the character, what to do, what not to do, who to play him into, who not to play him into, yada, yada, yada. Let's get right into it, huh? So we will be doing this in like my stream style, even though I'm not actually live. Yeah, let's hop right into it. On her is one of the um, first characters that were uh, like one of the first hunters that was released. I got the pleasure of playing him back all the way in season zero, like beta testing and stuff. All that good stuff. This character is, you know, he's been around for quite some time. He's seen his peaks. He's seen his values. He's played quite often and then sometimes he's not played often at all. So yeah, this character has been a long, long, long time. A lot of people have had the opportunity to play him very well. Let's hop right into it. We usually start these guides off with a overview of their kit and what we do and how the character operates and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and get right into it. On her's passive is enfeeble. It reduces the protection of the enemy that you hit with your basic attacks. You know, there's a 20% debuff, so it just makes you hit a little harder. It's very nice. It's like a good way to you just hit harder than other hunters level one. You see you go from 36 to 43. It's not stack, it's off the first auto, so the second auto will be hitting with the prop debuff applied. You know, it's a very easy passive to quote unquote use. There's no interactions with it. You just hit them and you do extra damage, right? So moving on to the next ability, we have the shifting sands, aka the pillar, it's what everyone calls. It is the pillar that you see here. It's got an AoE circle around it. It is an AoE slow that also increases the damage of on her's basic attacks only, not abilities. So if you one and then two, you don't actually do any extra damage with the two. If you one and four, you don't actually do any, any extra damage with the four. You know, there's plenty of different uses. Mainly, you know, you can zone off an area like that. You see now they have to walk the circle to come through. You can actually pillar block minions. For instance, if you don't want your wave to push up, you can actually block your wave off like that. You can do the most iconic, you know, one and then impale them into the into the one. You know, there's there's a hundred different things you could do. You can actually use your one to tag creeps. A lot of people don't know this, but if, for instance, if you are being sound and there's a creep wave here, you can just go ahead and throw your one. And as long as the creeps die within the radius of the one while your one is up, you should actually get credit for them right here 50 experience 17 gold and yeah you know we'll get more into the intricacies of the one aka the shifting sands of the pillar a little bit later in the video uh his second ability is his bread and butter it's what makes the character extremely fun to play it is his impale it is his main clearing ability it's just a line ability goes straight through everything it's stopping at the first god hit but it will push the god through and it will allow the god or any minion or character that the god impaled passes through will still take damage, it's not Miyak backed or stunned. Uh, I don't know where to show that, but we could show it here. I don't know if this actually hits. So you can see that the red line only works on the Ode in the first one. These don't actually move, so you don't actually see him to you know get pushed forward. But as you can see, these other three Odins do take damage. That's because you are pushing the first Impale target through them. Um, impale is a very fun, very cool, very you know nice ability. It's very like very easy to use, very fluid. The cool thing about the impale is if you impale the enemy into a wall, they will be stunned, as you could see. And, you know, it's not always something you should try to do, but it is a very good thing to practice, try to get people into walls. This sets up for a lot of different things, for body blocks, for ultimates, for just to run away even sometimes. People do forget sometimes that an impale is just a knockback as well. So if somebody's chasing you in a quick 180 pillar away, or 180 impale away, you know, that'll help you recover or just get away from the enemies. Moving on to his third ability, it is his Disperse, aka his Leap, his Jump, whatever you want to call it. It is a, let me go to uh, normal casting here. It is a, not a terribly small circle, but it's obviously not the biggest circle. Um, it is a knock-up on land, so if you hit somebody, you will knock them up. Uh, the knock-up, I believe, is based off of where you actually land, so if you land close, it'll knock them backwards, and if you land far, it'll knock them closer to you. This can obviously be used to get away, to chase people, to engage 1v1s. Uh, a lot of people use it to set up the impale stun, which is a very um, great way to actually con confirm that damage. A lot of times you could use the jump to bait. That's just like a bait jump, it's not really an on her special thing. That's obviously something you could do on any character. So yeah, you know, very standard jump as a knockback. It is a directional knockback, meaning, or not a direct, I don't know what, what the proper terminology would be, but wherever 
you actually choose to jump is the way they're going to go. So if you jump to the side of them, just go to the side. If you jump to the left, it'll go to the right. If you jump in front, he'll go back, right? And last but not least, the Desert Fury on his ultimate. A very simple ultimate, considering we've got some characters in the game that have some multi-stage ultimates and stuff like that. It's just on her, you know, he just releases a bunch of spears. Makes you see him in. The spears do go through walls. There's eight of them. Does a crap ton of damage. Try to hit as many as you can. That's the whole ult. Ideally, you know, you amp into a wall, and then you ult them. Honor her has a very short ult cooldown, as you can see. Well, you can't see it in here, but it is a 75 second cooldown. I believe it is the shortest base cooldown of the hunters besides AMC Stinger, which means you should be throwing this ult out as often as possible. It'll actually make for great up windows of opportunity to solo people, to get wave pressure, to steal objectives, whatever the case may be. Use, use, use the ult. The biggest mistake I see Honor players are, uh, do is not use the ult as often as possible. You want to get as much pressure with you can or with the ult as you can 15 seconds doesn't seem like a lot of time in real life But considering how much can happen in 15 seconds, it's might it is a huge window opportunity to get things done So use 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 your ult do not feel you know, upset if you miss it a lot or if you're not great with it Just use it get used to it and just get some good value out of it moving on into the uh, Build paths. I think that's what we usually go to here. Well, so we've gone over the abilities We'll go ahead and do it what I currently build on the character will give you a couple different options. I actually know there was a patch today, so I'm not quite sure. I heard there was a Wind Demon nerf, so I'm not quite sure if this is going to be the meta build. I'll probably update it in the uh, comment section down below. I uh, think that the Wind Demon nerf is super, super uh, bad, and maybe Wind Demon just won't be bought anymore. As for starter items, on her is quite flexible. You can go one of three starters like many ADCs can. You want to be going arrow if you're going to make a if you're going to be going a crit build, otherwise you want to be going one of Cal or Destol. On her has the lowest base attack speed in the game, come level 20, so Cal I feel is a better fit for myself personally. I just like having the extra attack speed come that late game because, you know, obviously a lot of people are building mid guardian males, witch blades, you know, a lot of anti attack speed items are being bought right now. So not auto attacking fast as a primarily auto attack hunter isn't optimal in my eyes. So we're going to be going over the crippled first. You go ahead and start the Gilded Arrow. I always build the Virus Gauntlet on on her. I do not build trans. That's a big no-no in my eyes. I don't really think it's that bad. I guess it's not a big no-no, but <laughs> um, I just think Devos is much, much, much stronger on him. You can go trans if you want, but sustain is super valuable as a carry. On her has got very hard-hitting auto attacks, which allow you to lifesteal a lot more than other hunters with the one-up. And it's just an overall perfect item for the god. Let me get some relics here. Finishing the trans off of your, ideally your first back, we will always head into a ninja tabby, warrior tabby, or just the inferior boot uh, variant at the moment until maybe they get an added stat or maybe some buff stats. I do not see myself ever buying them because attack speed is so valuable. From here, we go executioner. Now, typically I go XE first. There are some niche scenarios where I go windyman first if I really feel like I'm just going to be a farm goblin. But overall, XE is just usually a better third item here because the pen is applicable to your jungler usually, sometimes even your support, your solo laner. It applies to objectives. It's got, you know, base attacks. But it's just a very cheap item, affordable, makes you very hard to box, makes you kill tanks faster, and just a very strong item in general. After this, we will be going into the pre-nerf Wind Demon. I will reiterate, I did not see the Wind Demon nerfs, and it's possible this item will not be built in the next patch. You know, this is what we're building in the current day and age. Uh, the Wind Demon is absolutely phenomenal. It gives you a lot of great stats. Power, attack speed, crit chance with a nice little passive there, giving you 10% pen and movement speed. The movement speed combined with the pillar can actually make you quite hard to dive slash even confirm melee autos on, on top of abilities, which is very nice. And Wind Demon is just a very crucial item in these uh, crit build paths at the moment because it just feels so, so, so nice to have when you actually get that first crit. Now here is where the build path will differentiate from old slash previous build paths. You know, usually you'd see a rage into the Wind Demon, but we have decided that Deathbringer is the most optimal crit uh, item here. It negates a lot of what Spectral Armor does and actually makes uh, objectives die immediately for the most part. I was playing an SPL match just earlier and I was auto attacking EFG for about 1.1 thousand. For reference, I think Fire has about 13,000 health. That'll take me about 13 autos. That is absolutely crucial because timing, like I said earlier, is extremely important and giving uh, carries with crit a window of opportunity to burst an objective is just so scary right now. So crit, is obviously just really strong and on her is one of the strongest if not actually honestly one of the stronger i don't think he's the strongest because he doesn't actually have an attack speed sim but that one coupled with a deathbringer on an objective or anybody honestly at that point it's so much damage you will see maybe we'll throw some clips in from stream or something like that but yeah 
So we finished the build off. Obviously, if you're going crit, you will be going the Ornate Arrow. The Diamond Arrow makes no sense. I think it's a terrible starter. It's contingent on actually last hitting the creeps. Maybe if it was off of assist, it'd be a little better. But Ornate Arrow is just infinitely better, especially with the buff to the base attack and the crit chance. They can get, um, you know, just, just a hell of a lot better. So we're going to go ahead and stack up all of our items here. Just with the build, we have 195 power, 345 in-hand power. We have 70% crit chance, which is phenomenal. And you do remember that Ornate Arrow's passive makes you farm a lot better, so... You can honestly farm them to your 6th item, and your 6th item post boots is actually very much up to you. You can go Dominance. Dominance is extremely nice. You do lose a good bit of attack speed because you're selling energy tabby, but it can be okay. Maybe if somebody grabs the Shogun's, or if you're just always grabbing upgraded purple. You can go Kins if you'd like, if you feel like they have a lot of health and they've built a lot of Spectrals. You can go Oboe if you want. If you feel like they're stacking up and Oboe would do a lot of uh, good work in team fights, then go Oboe. Why not? You can go Poison Star if you feel like a lot of their damage can be negated by going Poison Star in these team fights, and you're like, dang. If I just had maybe 15% less damage on me, I would have lived and we would have won the game. Buy yourself a poison star, it also give you more crit, so that's quite nice. Maybe even a shadow steel shuriken if they have a lot of healing. Maybe they're into a Gon Yu, or you are into like a Hell, Guan, you know, just characters that heal a lot. Honestly, a lot of characters right now in this game have a lot of healing just somewhere in their kit slash somewhere in their builds. So it honestly isn't the worst pickup. So yeah, this is the crit build. Absolutely hits like a freaking truck. Let's go ahead and see what we're popping here. Go ahead and put that one down. 653 on this Odin bot. No buffs. That's a rank 1 1. If we go ahead and put an upgraded one down, that's up to about 725. With 2.33 attack speed, no auras on me, no purple buff, no shogun. So this can easily cap out. Absolutely phenomenal. I love this build a lot. It makes you hit like an absolute truck. Look at that. On a level 1 Odin bot, we're critting for 900. On objectives, and you have your 500 pot, your 3k pot, your red buffs, whatever the purple buffs, you absolutely slam. So, yeah, this is the crit variant that I usually go typically right now. But we will go ahead and go over our pen versions of these builds not of these builds just our pen versions in general so as uh stated before on her has very very low base attack speed so i almost always opt for hunter's cow that still feels great for the mana sustain but it is just it's just hard man it's just hard sitting at two point like zero three attack speed level 20 with five items it's just what am i doing here right from here uh we typically go one of two things we usually go either xe pins and oboe and let me go ahead and check it out xe kins and oboe puts us right at 2.4 and we are not next to a teammate, so we don't actually have our Hunter's Cowl proc, which means we would be capped. Or we can go our... What I like to go more often is our Oboe 3rd, because I think Oboe 3rd is such a great power spike, into Kins, into Titan's Bane last, which will put us up at 2.15. And I think if I change team here... Yes, let me go check out what the Hunter's Cowl attack speed is here. 2.38, no purple buff, no shogun's. When would you go one or the other? I think Xe is just a weaker pen item than Titan's Bane, but it's a very nice power spike. I feel like if maybe you really need the pen third item, maybe the solo laner is just massive and you're like, dang, I can't really afford to get pen last item. I really need Xe here. Let's go Xe. Other um, situations where I feel like Xe might be better first is if you are playing with a physical mid laner or if you are in a death ball comp and you are playing with a physical jungler who will likely be hitting the same targets as you. Um, past that, I think Oboe is a much stronger third item power spike. It allows you to clear faster. It allows you to be more of a nuisance in team fights, proccing that Oboe from per from um, enemy to enemy, you know, interrupting blinks, interrupting engages, just, just being so annoying and doing so much work. So yeah, these are our two pen variants. Um, go either or. You can throw in, like I said before, you can throw in a death toll if you want. I never go the right side upgrade. I think it's worse. So I would just go death embrace. But as you can see, we've run into a problem with our attack speed being actually under 2.0, which in this case, I think it's absolutely mandatory almost to go the pan to the, go the XE Kentobo build just because you need that attack speed quite heavily. That is pretty much our build paths for the character. I don't think you should go trans on the god. I mean, it, it works well with his ultimate. The cooldown's not that bad, but I just, I think he's just so much stronger with the virus gauntlets. Try it out for yourself and then let me know. As for combos, let's go ahead and show off some of the cool combos you could do. First and foremost, we will go over our pillar impale combination. The pillar does act like a wall slash surface that you can be impaled into. And it is, you know, quite a cool flashy play you can make. Pillar behind the person and then impale them into it if there is no wall available. Past that, I would recommend impale them into a wall and then pillaring in front of you to block off autos and then go into your ultimate. Obviously, your ultimate goes through walls and not many other auto attacks go through walls, if any of them. Honestly, if they do, you might want to send me the match ID so I can report them for hacking. But yeah, remember to use that... Uh, 
ability to actually be able to hit through a wall just like this. You see they can't hit me through the wall and I have done over half her health. Remember to always try to impale into a wall if a wall is nearby. Don't always actually look for this 1-2 combo. It's not always the best. In fact, messing that combo up on a hunter that has equal slash maybe not as much kill pressure can actually you know lead straight to your death. For instance, if you're playing into a Hachi and you missed your 1-2 combo, that gives him a window of opportunity to completely blast you because a lot of your cooldowns are down, leaving you adjust your ultimate. Another nice combo that will help you really set up all of your on her one twos will be to jump on the person you are attacking. Okay, she went through my pillar, but do that. Bots are so annoying, but you jump on them, you put the pillar up, and you impel them to the pillar all in one, you know, solid motion while they're in the air. It doesn't get much counterplay because they have to pre-beads your knockup and if they beads after the knockup you can still do a good bit of damage and you can honestly even hold your impale and um just ulti them if you do see that beads come out on the jump another good tip of advice is an auto cancel you should be able to auto to auto and get that little extra bit of damage out you see the auto and the two connect pretty much at the same exact time so you auto two and that's it remember like i said before the one can be a great ability to body block and traverse and you know just to, to put up a little barricade between you and what's in front of you it is also an aoe slow which makes it very hard to chase into you and also a good tactic to chase yourself i think always slowing before ulting is a great 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 thing to do because the ults are actually quite hard to hit like mid and late range or mid and long range so getting that extra slow on them is obviously awesome a lot of people don't know honors all in potential if they don't play the character quite often but this character is extremely hard to go against because of how strong he is in that lane when you jump on somebody their first reaction is typically to jump away because not many hunters can actually stand their ground against hunter which me or honor which means they need to leave but what's so strong with hunter's kit is that after they backflip away you can actually just ult them with your pillar up and that'll slow them down forcing probably a beads if not a beads it should be a solo kill you know, on her is just a very, very strong 1v1 character that becomes extremely hard to box and fight because of how much instantaneous damage he does with his two. Um, you know, available CC if you're playing anywhere in the jungle or even if he's just a really good one tour and just how much like crazy burst slash kill potential this character has. It's actually why you see him picked super, super often right now in the SPL and why I think he's one of the stronger hunters. He doesn't actually have many counter matchups because of just his kit is just... There's nothing to counter in the kit, it's just a very good base kit that has a lot of opportunity. Like I said before, try to always one before you all. It'll just help you land it. Cause like when you know when they're late, when they're moving at a long range, it's not quite easy to turn the uh Desert Fury. So I would recommend just holding it kinda kinda still and then just moving it very minorly, trying to predict their movement. Because the second you're doing this with your ultimate, chances are you're gonna miss a lot of them. So a lot of them what I like to do is just move my character to match their movement and then uh, keep my mouse pretty still when I'm actually ulting. The jump can obviously go over walls. It is uh, capable of being a Willux pulled, so keep that in mind. A big thing you can do with Honor, actually, this is what I think I was going to bring up earlier, is if you get into tight scenarios, maybe there's an assassin on you, maybe there's a Hunter who's just dashed on you or something, you can up down because it is a knock up or knock back, and it gives you a lot of room to work with because you can impale them off, you could just, you know, you could pill yourself off, go for the ultimate, you can impale them into something, you can maybe even just run off of that maybe bait an active like jump you know they're gonna active pillar behind yourself and run keep that in mind when there's somebody right on top of you it's typically most used against junglers sometimes people think like oh i'm just gonna die here okay well if you're gonna die up down maybe try to get a beads or something maybe an extra ability out of the person dying you and that'll help your teammates um you know do work against whatever's hitting you uh, instead of just jumping away and then you're dead anyways sometimes it's better to jump away and then pillar behind yourself just get used to this little motion you can actually pillar under yourself if your ping is good, but if you're on high ping and it's not going to work, you are simply going to put a pillar down and then run into it like this and look like an idiot. That is pretty much how you play the character. The character is very simple. He doesn't have anything crazy going on with this kid. He doesn't have any stand switching. He doesn't have any multi-functioning abilities that are like, sometimes you need to do this, sometimes you need to do that. Just learn how to really use that impale well, get that auto to combo down, and learn to use your ultimate well. You know, you don't want to be going like this with your ultimate. That's not, it's not going to be accurate. Uh, active usage, you pretty much always want to be beat dead just on Hunter. Sometimes you go Shell. Shell is really good into um, auto attack junglers, but actually it's been nerfed in this patch coming up. So Shell is going to be purchased quite a 
uh, less often now. It has been uh, stripped of its block sacks, and now you take 50% less auto attack damage while the shell is up, which actually wasn't that big a deal. The damage wasn't the biggest part. It was kind of like procs and like auto cancels, I suppose. I mean, auto cancels are still going to be weaker, but they'll still be good. So yeah, probably not going to be going shell that often anymore. Yeah, I really can't stress how important it is to use your ultimate. A lot of people just hold on to the ultimate, and I think it's such a big mistake. I will almost always ult the wave at level 5. It is super easy to ult. Look at that. You ult it, and it's dead. And that ability is up in 75 seconds. Just use it, man. Just use it. It's such a short cooldown. It's so much damage. Even if you're not killing somebody with the ultimate, use it for poke. Use it for pressure. Use it for wave clear. Oh, you have 90 mana, and you want to back at level 5? Ult the wave. Parries can't deal with that clear. It is super, super efficient. I, almost, I Like I said, I almost always find myself holding waves at around that level 5, level 6 mark. For team fights. It's, it's very simple to play on her. You hit what's in front of you. You pillar yourself off if people are coming close. You pillar enemies off that are coming in the distance. If you're on defense, utilize your pillar to um, just, you know, pillar off. Like, if you're on a Phoenix Siege and they're coming in, let's just say... Let's just say the Phoenix is somewhere here. I am the enemy. I would pillar them off like this, making it extremely treacherous for them to walk through the slow area because it allows you to land way more autos at a much higher damage. And allows your teammates to also hit their abilities because, you know, a lot of our teammates can't hit shit. Another thing that I did forget to mention is the pillar does block abilities and auto attacks that don't actually go through walls. So, for instance, if you have a Kakulkin one, Kakulkin has been playing a lot, the pillar will block it. So, get good at using your pillar to block things. A lot of matchups are kind of uh, abusable by on her simply because of that mechanic. You can block a Hachiman ult with this. If, uh, if a Hachiman starts ulting you and the arrow comes out and you pillar yourself, the arrow will actually go into the side of the pillar and not hit you. Same thing goes with Uller Axe, Cupid 1, Rama 1's obviously go through it, but Rama Autos don't. Um, whatever abilities don't actually go through walls will, will hit that pillar like a wall because it is a wall. Uh, same thing goes with dashes. Plenty of people get blocked in their dashes, get their blocks, or get their dashes blocked off. You know, you've seen them, you know, block off jumps. If they're jumping away, you could pillar in front of them, they'll pretty much jump into the pillar like this, and then it's a little, like, comfortable. You could block off ultimates like this. Like I said, Hachimano, you could block off a Guan Yu horse. You know, there's plenty of different things. I'd recommend getting used to the pillar with, on normal cast, because there are some very, very cool different things you could do when you're, like, for instance, if somebody's running this way, you, know, you want to get this little, little area where they can actually run through, or it makes them look like they can run through. You know, you're gonna get really used to that because that is a big deal when you're playing against an on here you're like oh i can run away and then it turns out you're actually stuck in that corner on top of that do remember if i don't know how i could show it on these odin bots but if there is a gap in between so let's just say here if i actually impaled somebody in between this even though my autos go through this they will get stuck here they will get stuck let's go ahead and do what to level and how to level I always level my two first, I level one, it's obviously, you know, your main source of clear. You level your three after, you almost always want your escape at level two as a hunter. Followed by, typically, at level three, we put a second point in our two, because the one, frankly, just costs too much mana in those first couple levels, and it's just not that useful. At level four, we do put a point into our one, finally, unless we put a point into our one at level three, for whatever reason, maybe somebody was ganking, so I put it off the jungle. Maybe there was something else that was happening, and I needed to put something off. At that point, I'd put a point in my two again. Just make sure you're maxing your two. At level five, we obviously always put a point in our ult, a very, very strong ability. And then we go to maxing our two. The only thing that you should look out for, there's a very nice point hold that you can have with on her. At level eight, you do not level an ability, and you hold that point for level nine. At that point, you can then um, increase your impale to the max level and your ultimate to your second level instead of putting two points one. I'll show you what that looks like right now. So let's just say we are two, one. We are 1, 2, 1, 1 on our abilities. We go to level 6, put a point on our impale. We go to level 7, we put a point on our impale. At level 8, you will have the ability to point, put a point into your 1 or your 3. We will hold that point. We will not use it at all, like so. I'm level 8. Yeah, I'm not going to use anything. I'm not upgrading my 1. I'm not upgrading my 3. Then we go to level 9, and as you can see, your 2 becomes upgradable. At that point, we'll upgrade our 2 and our 4, and this will allow you to actually full clear archers just a small thing it's not that big a deal if you are paying attention and looking out for it, it will help you your waves and also maybe even just get a kill sometimes you're missing just a little bit of damage and maybe that impale damage would have done it past that i almost always max my one you don't really want to be maxing your three that often unless you're just a maniac and want to jump in obviously the one just goes up in buff damage and slow percentage which is super nice for confirming um ults and just you know chasing people slash helping people um 
helping yourself not be chased so we will put as many points into our alt as possible at that time and then finish off our one and then from there we will finish off our three and then putting a point into our alt whenever possible uh so the, the leveling order is two primarily then one then four then three the jump is nice but you don't really need levels just for setting up a thing that i can actually tell you is the pillar and obviously all player made walls are now broken on objectives so do not put your pillar on an objective or somewhere that an objective will cross through this is only applicable to titans and gold trees not fire giant obviously fire giant and move so you know if you're planning a fire giant you put it close to it maybe put it on the side where you think enemies might come in same thing goes for titans do not drop your pillar on top of the titan it will just get deleted and uh it doesn't actually do anything to towers it doesn't affect your damage on towers i'll show you right now you hit this for 40 you put the pillar you hit this for 40. something you can actually do is pillar yourself off from enemies so if i'm an enemy on this side i obviously can hit you and then play to the opposite side of where the enemy is playing maybe you want to clear a wave and you don't want to be hit so you put a pillar up to your right and then clear the wave on the left or maybe you want to weave in auto attacks between the pillars you know you can do this as well the boxes are typically a little bit bigger not a little bit bigger but they're quite hard to just fully get behind this so if you angle if you angle your pillar and then just you know try to weave in some autos left and right remember remember this is crucial this is crucial for on her you can one the wave and leave slash back look i'll back well i guess i'm still in range right now but that would have given me experience if i did back that is it i think that's gonna wrap up our on her guide for today if you guys did enjoy this video make sure to like comment and subscribe click the notification on the top right corner of your screen to know when i upload next let me know if i missed anything i don't really think i did maybe i should put a checklist up on my one of my monitors to really like perfect these guides but i kind of like just free flowing off the top of the brain so like i said that is it for this video let me know let me know what you guys think maybe uh you know maybe you play some on her and tell me what your thoughts are about them that's it i'm out